imagine a situation. Going to program a car washing robot, a car washing robot that actually washes thousands of cars in a day. You are programming it. The instructions are going to be park the car in the washing slot, put the water on it, apply the soap, scrub it, and then wash with the water. Only five commands that the robot is supposed to perform. But the five commands needs to be repeated thousands times. Why? Because the car washing robot is supposed to wash thousands of robots in a single day. So how do you do that? Are you supposed to write that five line of code thousand times? What do you do? We use loops. Okay. So when we want to repeat instructions multiple times, it could be two times, three times, like, you know, more than one time. If we want to repeat instructions, we use loop. This is what computer is good at. Repeating the instructions again and again. So we are already aware of the repeat loop. We have done it very well. And you guys are very, uh, very well versed about with this repeat loop. Today in this session, we are going to learn for loop. What is this for loop? How it is different from repeat loop? We will learn everything in this session. So let's get started. What is a for loop? In computer science, a loop is a programming structure that repeats itself until a specific condition is met. Uh, it actually repeats the sequence of instructions until a specific condition is met. This is what we have seen in repeat loop also, right? What does a repeat loop do? A repeat loop repeats itself these many times as we asked it to repeat. So it will repeat, say, for example, two times, four times, ten times, twenty times, hundred times, or thousand times, or as many times as we asked it to repeat. But Repeat loop do not have any other condition associated with it. It will just repeat itself these many times as it is written. So now what is this for loop and how it is different from the repeat loop? For loop, something looks like this. Okay. For loop looks like this. In some, why, how? For I, from something to something, count by something. It means for I. Refer I here as a variable. I here is a variable that will change during the entire execution of this for loop. This variable I will keep on changing during the entire execution of this for loop. So what do we do in this for loop structure? You know, what we are writing here is for I. Here we are initializing a variable which has got a name I. You can change this name also. We will see it how later. But for now, understand here, we are initializing a variable i to a value, to its initial value, which is after form, which comes after from. So for i, it means i is a variable which has got some initial value and some ending value or some last value. So uh, i is a variable which has got an initial value and end value and then we say count by something okay count by again a value so what does it mean the entire structure looks like this for a variable which has got an initial value and this is its end value and the value of this variable should keep on increasing by this number so what does it mean here we say that define a variable i which has got an initial value of phi after each time this for loop is executed, the value of i will keep on increasing by the counter which we are setting here. Okay, so what does it mean? We are writing a for loop and we are giving it instructions to repeat itself and stop when the value of i becomes equal to its end value. So what does it mean? Say for example, this piece of code where we are saying for i is equals to for i is equals to initial value is 5. Every time the for loop executes, the value of i will increase by 5. It means in the first execution, the value of i is 5. In the second execution, it will become 10. In the third execution, again plus 5 means 15. Fourth execution, again plus 5 means 20. You can understand it as, you know, skip counting the value of i keep on increasing as per the skip counting of this counter. So take this example. What is happening in this example? First time, the value of i is 5. At the second execution, the value of i becomes 10. 
third execution, the value of i becomes 15. Fourth execution, the value of i becomes 20 and so on. Until the value of i becomes 500. Why 500? Because here in end value, we have specified 500. That repeat this loop until the value of i becomes 500. And with each execution, the value of i should increase by this counter, which is here in this last box. Okay, so the execution will stop as soon as the value of i becomes 500. Interesting. So let's see it practically. We will do a very, very, very interesting exercise in Artist Lab. Open a new project in Artist Lab and start following me. So uh, from where we can pick a for loop in Artist Lab, you can go to loops and pick it from here. This is how it looks like. For i from initial value to ending value and increase by this value incremental value okay so say for example i am putting up a loop which says so let's assume this example where we are saying for i from 0 to 50 count by 10 so what does it mean the initial value of my i is 0 okay first execution the value of i is 0 the second execution value of i becomes 10 then 20 then 30 then 40 and then 50 it means this loop will overall run six times. So let's prove it that this loop is running actually six times. So to prove this from actions, I am going to create a line and from brush, I will also uh, take this random color one. Okay, so every time a line is drawn, it will be drawn in a different color so that I can understand this line is drawn from first execution, then second execution, third execution and so on. And here in move forward, instead of moving by any pixels that we can write, I will be giving it, I will go to variables and I will use this variable i. So what I am saying, for i from 0 to 50, count by 10, move forward by i pixels. So first time this artist moves 0 pixels, it means it is at the same position. Second time it will move 10 pixels, as you can see this pink one this pink line okay 10 pixels then it moves 20 pixels 30 pixels 40 pixels and then 50 pixels just to remove the confusion let's do one thing uh, to remove the confusion let's uh, initialize it from say for example 10 okay because a zero pixels line is not visible to us so this is how it looks like now first time the value of i is 10 then 20 then 30 then 40 and then 50 it is. Okay. So this loops runs overall five times. 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. Okay. What will happen if we change it to say for example, if we change it to um, 60? How many times this will run? Or how many times it is running actually? So you, as you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now this loop is running 6 times. So uh, let, let's repeat it again. What does it do? Let's repeat again. What does this for loop do? Here in this for loop, we initialize a variable. We define a variable. We initialize it to its initial value. We are giving an increment. After every time this for loop is ran, this value will increase by this count. And the for loop will stop when the value becomes the end value. Okay, so let's do an experiment. Okay, let us create a rectangle. Let us create it normally. And then out of which using for loop, we will create a spiral rectangle. Let's do it now. So I will be creating a normal rectangle very normally as all of you know. So we will repeat it four times because a rectangle has got four sides and move forward, for example, 50 pixels or maybe 30 pixels. And then next, what should be the turn? Do you remember the magic number? 360. What is 360 divided by 4? 360 divided by 4 is 90. So to make a square, the artist should take a 90 degree turn. Okay, so move forward by 30 pixels, turn right by 90 degrees and we have our rectangle ready. 
But now what do I want? I want a spiral rectangle to be created. What is a spiral rectangle? What, is that? what does I mean by a spiral rectangle? Let me show it to you. So, when I'm creating a spiral rectangle, this is my first line. My second line is a little larger than the first line. Third line is a little larger than the second line. Fourth line is larger than the third line. Fifth is larger than the fourth line. Sixth is larger than the fifth line and so on. So do you see what is happening in this case? Because my all the four sides are not equal, but still they are taking a 90 degrees turn. So when this line number four is created, line number four is drawn, it is coming here. It is not meeting with my line number one, starting point of line number one. So hence it creates a spiral rectangle. Okay, it creates a spiral rectangle, something like this. When we continue a little bigger, a little bigger, little bigger, little bigger, little bigger, like this. Okay, so let's create a spiral rectangle now. So I will remove this code and I will put this code back. So we are saying move forward up by I pixel. So we are creating a line. But if we want to create a rectangle, it will have to take a 90 degree turn. So I will go to actions and I will take a 90 degree turn here. So do you see what happened? Let's analyze what is happening here. First time when this for loop is executing, the value of i is 10. Okay, because this is the initial value. So this artist is actually creating a line of 10 pixels. Next time when this for loop executes, because my increment is 10, okay? So 10 plus 10 becomes 20. The line is 20 pixels here. Third time when my art, this for loop runs, the value of i becomes 20 plus 10, 10, that is 30. So this line created is 30 because we are giving the command move forward by i pixels and the value of i is changing with every time the loop executes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and so on. Okay, so 30 and then it becomes 40, then it becomes 50, this blue line is 50 and then this last line is 60 and it stops. Why does it stop? Because the value of i has reached this end value. So my loop stops. My artist does not move ahead forward. Let's do a few experiments to it. Okay, instead of uh, 60, I'm putting it 100 here. So how many times this loop will run? So this time this loop will run 10 times. So I have a 10, I have 10 uh, lines actually, 10 spiral. Let me do another experiment. Instead of count by 10, let me say count by 5. So what happens in this case? My lines are smaller. Why? Because the increment is also smaller. First time the value of i is 10, then it becomes 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 and so on. And it stops when the value of i becomes 100. Okay. So we can do some more experiments. Let me make it 200 and see what happens. 200. Okay. So we have a bigger spiral. Okay, so we have this spiral rectangle. What next? I want to create a spiral triangle as also. Why not a spiral triangle? So guys, do you remember the magic number? Say it aloud with me. 360 degrees. 360 degrees is our magical number of geometry. And how many sides does a triangle have? A triangle has three sides. What is 360 divided by 3? 120. So instead of 90, I will just make it 120. And here, uh, we are not stopping this loop. This loop stops automatically when the value of i reaches 200, okay? So I can change this count by to 10 so that the it the, this becomes a little neater. So I have changed it to 10. And probably I can make it 300 also. It becomes a little bigger. So do you see the magic number? I just changed one value. The turn which it is taking, instead of 90, I made it 120 and I have a spiral triangle in front of me. Next, I want to create a spiral hexagon as well. Okay, so how many sides a hexagon have? Pause, think and let me know in comments. How many sides a hexagon have? 
a hexagon has got six sides. Okay, a hexagon has got six sides and what is my magic number? Again, 360 is my magic number of geometry. So what is 360 divided by six? It is 60. So instead of taking 120 degrees turn, I will take a 60 degrees turn this time. And I have my hexagon spiral ready. Um, I want to make it a little closer, so I will change it to 5. Okay, I have my hexagon ready. Uh, now, let's create a pentagon as well. So, uh, how many sides a pentagon have quickly? 5 sides. What is 360 divided by 5? It is 72. So, I have my pentagon spiral ready. So, this is how we can use for loop. This for loop repeats itself until the end value of my variable is reached. We are also providing a counter that increments the value, the initial value by the incremented value. I hope you enjoyed the session I, as I did during the recording of this session. See you soon in the next session. Bye-bye.